Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Tipo's Corner. This is Travis, your host, and uh, today is day 15 of Evergreen Month, and that's where we concentrate on the mechanics. The, the term that Wizard came up with to call them Evergreen. These are mechanics that are part of the game, that stay there. Uh, we've covered things like trample and vigil vigilance, and you see lifelink there. We're going to do a lifelink deck soon. I uh, wanted to cover Exile. Exile isn't... Uh, isn't a mechanic in the normal term that they think of when they talk about like lifelink. Lifelink is the vanilla term that they use to describe an attribute that a creature card has or an enchantment card has, that kind of thing. But exile is a mechanic of the game. So we're including that in our overall uh, coverage of topics that are everything Magic the Gathering. And let's see if we can find... there we go. Flying, Exile, Flicker Feet, Exile, Glass Casket, Exile. We've got some others in there too. But let's go through the whole deck. We've got 63 cards, 14 creatures, not a ton of creatures, only 22 lands. So lots of instants and enchantments to make up the balance. Sentinel's Eyes, I usually have one copy of this in a lot of my white decks. Uh, one plus one counter and it gives them Vigilance. Staunch Shieldmate. Uh, you don't see this guy normally except in maybe some of the newer Dwarf decks. Dwarf Tribal. Gingerbrute has haste and if you spend one mana you can't block him with other creatures except if those creatures have haste themselves. You can also sacrifice him and gain three life. Soul Guide Lantern. Um, this is sort of just in case I come up against Croxes and other things that escape from the graveyard. This gives me a chance to exile their graveyard. Angelic Ascension. Here's where you exile a target creature or planeswalker. Its controller creates a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. This is handy if uh, you've got a 1-1 creature or a 2-2 creature that's about to die and you can transform it into a 4-4. Or if they've got like a big 8-8 creature and you can't handle that kind of size creature and you can cut them down to size by making them a 4-4 creature. Two copies of Flicker of Fate. This is a fun one. Uh, you get to exile the target creature or enchantment. Uh, then you get to return it to the battlefield in its owner's control. So if your opponent steals your creature, you could flicker it and bring it back to your side. If your creature is about to die, you could flicker it and uh, make their spell fizzle and bring it back just fine. If they've pumped up a cleric, for example, and he's like 6-6, six, six, you could flicker it and it comes back uh, still under the owner's control, but it resets at 1-1. One, one. So all sorts of different uh, capabilities for this particular card. Glass Casket, when that enters the battlefield, you exile a target creature with mana value 3 or less. That keeps into effect unless they destroy the casket. Hushbringer is flying in lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. It kind of shuts down some of what they might try and do. A couple of Luminarch Aspirants to add plus one counters onto my creatures before combat. One more land Inquisitor, you can give him first strike when you pay for it. Just one Revitalize to gain three life and draw a card. This is uh, one of the cantrips that replaces itself, so I don't mind going over 60 cards. One copy of Seasoned Hollow Blade, you discard a card and you tap him and he gains Indestructible. One Swift Response to destroy a tapped creature, Birth of Miletus, just one copy of that. Four Banishing Lights, uh, again because the theme of this is Exile. Okay, so Banishing Light enters the battlefield and it exiles the target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Same thing with Glass Casket, but without the, uh, the mana limit. You can banish uh, creatures or enchantments with this, that kind of thing. Anything that's permanent. Dreadful Apathy, you can enchant a creature. Make sure it can't attack or block. When you have three extra mana at your leisure, you can spend it and exile that enchanted creature then. One copy of Expel. I might bump this up. I think I have more copies. Let's see. Nope, just one copy right now. So Exile Target Tapped Creature. One Skyclave Apparition. When it enters the battlefield, you can Exile a target non-land, non-token permanent, if it's mana value 4 or less. Uh, when Skyclave leaves, which it usually does, the owner still does get an XX Blue Illusion Creature Token, where it's the mana value of the Exiled card. So they can end up with a 3-3 or a 4-4 creature eventually. But that's better than, you know, maybe it was an enchantment that was going to ruin your whole game. And now it's just a 4-4 creature that you might have uh, the ability to control. When worded battlements, attacking creatures get plus one. When blade banish, you exile a target creature with power four or greater. 
commanding presence. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike. And whenever you deal combat damage to a player, you get to create a human soldier creature token. When Falcon are adept, when they attack, they get a 1-1 one, one white bird token with flying that's tapped and attacking at the same time. Three copies of True Love's Kiss to exile a target artifact or enchantment, and you get to draw a card. Two Baneslayer Angels with flying, first strike, and lifelink. Three copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, uh, exile target permanent, and you get to bring somebody back from your graveyard. One Journey to Oblivion uh, that is basically like uh, Banishing Light, but if you happen to have uh, Cleric Rogue Warriors and Wizards around, the, the cost of casting this decreases depending on how many members that party you have. Two copies of the Secure the Scene, exiled target non-land permanent, its controller creates a 1-1 white soldier creature token. Again, if they've got like a 4-4 or 5-5 dragon flying at you, um, it's not instant speed, so you have to wait till it's your turn, but uh, you could cut those guys down to size. One Victory's Envoy to uh, give everybody else counters at the beginning of your upkeep. One Grasping Giant, because when creatures try and block him, they get exiled before anything else happens. And Ugin, because we're talking exile, his second power there is to exile mana value X or less is whatever you choose. So most of these, I have some creatures that don't have exile, but most of the spells and at least half the creatures have some um, relationship or ability with exile. Exiles actually spread pretty well across a lot of the different colors. So when I was looking at creating an exile deck, uh, I realized that uh, the, there was almost an infinite number of choices that you could go with. So I decided just to settle for white just to demonstrate how powerful exile could be if you made a, an entire deck focused around that concept. So we're going to take it out for a spin and just see how effective it is. If you like these videos, go ahead and consider clicking like or subscribe and hang out with us for the gameplay coming up. And Ugin has already made an appearance. Lovely. We like Ugin, but we prefer that he stop showing up in the first seven cards every single time we play with him. Ugin's kind of an overpowered card. Sometimes I see people playing with two or three copies of him. I'll destroy one copy and they bring a second one straight down. It's disgusting. So I have three or four decks with him in it, but I try not to overuse him because I don't want to rely on him as a crutch all the time. A dwarf deck, huh? But in this case, his exile ability fit in with the theme. So I had a lot of it, but a lot of times he ends up just sort of occupying a slot in your hand for all the game. Can get irritating. Looks like they have a couple slots reserved for land and one slot reserved for Uber. Very beginning. Okay, let's see. We can get rid of one of these guys now. And then we can bring down another Luminarch Aspirants. Do you have another inspiration right away? I would like to grow more powerful. I do not want to make that trade right now, if you don't mind. Okay, let's see. How do we want to do this? He's mana value 4, so I can't use him there. But... I can't flicker the artifact, so that's not going to work. But if my Luminarch has Vigilance, she can suddenly attack and defend at the same time. Well, not at the same time, one after the other, but you know what I mean, right? I can use her as an attacker and a defender. Mirror Shield. I love it. I love that you would use Mirror Shield. 
You know why? Because I have three copies of True Love's Kiss, and it gives me something to do. Five. Five, five. You can beat me, can't you? If you double block, and you're willing to accept those losses, you're not willing to accept those losses. Okay, well you're tapped out, so I'm just going to get rid of Mere Shield now. And that's why we have 63 cards in our deck. Between Revitalize and the three copies of True Love's Kiss, they replace each other. Or they replace themselves, I should say. Oh, we just got another one. Okay, fine. And you're hexproof. I hope you're happy. Okay, we've got some choices here. Let's do that. Gets the treasure. He's got plenty of mana to do whatever he wants to now. Yeah, I like that. He's got six, so if we do that, uh, do we want to attack? Yes, we do. He doesn't want to trade, he doesn't want to get rid of the Storm Kill Mart. It's part of his winning combination, probably. He wants to build it up and build it up and build it up. I could use at least one more land to do the kind of stuff I want to do. You killed my wall? Really? <sighs> Aha! See, if I had Hushbringer down already, that could have stopped things. But, we'll put Hushbringer down now. Maybe he'll just think of it as a jump blocker for the dragon, against the dragon. little bit of lifelink. Never hurt anybody. I want to get these guys above three toughness as soon as possible just because there could be more direct damage lurking around any corner. And he's got something he can do, but he's taking a long time considering it. It would cost one or two mana. Tap. Okay. Tap my two creatures. Go ahead. And exile. Which one are you going to exile? Probably the Luminarch. Look, even my opponent is using exile. Okay. Can't really stop that. Are you feeling confident now? You feel like you have the advantage. You do feel like you have the advantage. 
Bless your heart. You don't have a counter spell. No blocks. Another exile card. Hey, I'm the one with the exile themed card, not you. Okay, so let's try this. Full control. Oh, I can't do the artifact. I keep forgetting that. I was hoping. I was so hoping. Okay, I can get two life back. What if he does a sorcerer an instant? He's going to get a token. And that's going to increase his strength to seven. Okay. So we'll put him down. We'll give Vigilance to the Hush for him. We'll get rid of a couple of cards. Do that. And then we're going to attack. Seven points to you, three back to me. And if you have a dragon with haste, I still have enough mana to do something. He doesn't want to use his exile spell. Why not? You have to decide. Okay, here's where we have fun. Flicker of Faith. Resets the Hushbringer. It's going to get rid of Sentinel's eyes. But it's going to save Hushbringer. He still gets credit for casting the spell. But that spell fizzles. Guess what? This is coming back! Guess what? You can't attack me because I've got enough to kill your artist, and that's all you've got left. Victory is just another puzzle to be solved. Okay, that to buys open you time, the mind, you must first open but it doesn't buy you enough time. Do we expect them to be able to get anything back? We really don't. I don't think I need to exile anything. So I'm going to go get another card instead. That is lovely. There goes your projection. And here comes my attack. So 
Sorry, Narset, you gotta go. You wanna trade? He's willing to trade. Wow. To save Narset for one turn? Quiet, please. I don't know that that's the good trade. That gives you two life. Well, I guess he knew I was willing to get more birds and he can't handle more birds. So that at least cuts off the supply of birds. Breathe in. Exhale. This is when magic can sort of be like playing a game of chess where you have to think a couple moves ahead and a lot of the pieces reinforce each other, they protect each other. And in this case, we remove the defender, which is a classic move in chess, and then it clears the way for us to capture another piece. Let's have the birds take care of you. Just so there's no more surprises. And we've got a lot of backup contingency cards. If we need them. I know when to concede. It's tough to count an opponent out when they have ten lands. Even if they have just one card left, that's a lot of mystical energy to do almost anything they want. But... All we need is five points. Again. And x all of my opponent's stuff seems to have been a good strategy there. Let's see if we can do it again. Wow, we get a hand that doesn't have Ugin already? I'm sure he'll be the first draw. This might be Death Touch Tribal. Okay, first example of Exile. Get rid of the Death Touch. Bring down the gingerbread too. There is a chance that he's got an untap spell. Oh, he's got a man. Okay. Kind of unusual to see them wasted on a 1 1 creature. It makes me think he's kind of in trouble. Uh, should we spend. Yeah, let's put that down. But we're not going to attack. He's got all untapped lands. And he might have a 3-3. Or he might have a lovely little 4-4. Hydra's Grove. Okay. Um, oh, we're quite possibly prepared for that if you don't have a way to destroy enchantments is your only other card he can grow as big as you want him to he doesn't have trample uh -huh. <laughs> okay uh, let's see how do we want to do this? He might have a way to destroy that, but let's just get rid of you first, and that's all we need. And so there you have it. One exile, two exile, and the next turn was going to be the third exile card. 
completely shut down everything he was going to do. He had a couple of creatures. He had a pretty good balanced hand, right? He had a counter creature that would benefit from the Hydra's growth. He's going to grow really powerful really fast. Uh, got a death touch with Hydra's growth on him. Really good balance of mana, creatures, enchantments, and uh, just an overwhelming focus on exile, and we shut him down completely. All right, round three. When I go into these, I'm not so obsessed about whether I'm going to win or not, as much as we show them a game. But it does feel good when you put together a deck focused on a mechanic and the mechanic seems to work and it just makes for a really good demonstration straight out the gate and we win because we always love to win don't we? I don't want to kill the eye twitch I don't want to trade I just want to hit them eye twitches we don't mind if they stay alive forever just to keep them from getting to the other sideboard. Okay, what do we want to get rid of? I guess we'll get rid of a land? I lose three points. But I also get to do this. Whatever your plan was, I hope that wasn't the only plan. You're gonna destroy my ginger brute? Really? Do I want to let that happen? You know what, let's just have some fun. Flicker. Two mana to foil a three mana card. I'm still standing. Better than I ever been. I'm hoping he puts some sort of enchantment on the eye twitch and makes it worth a banishing light. The idea of one ones trading blows the entire time, and me having to banish a one one creature is disgusting. but I can make up for it with twice as much power. And the cool thing is, he's not tapped, so if he tries to kill him again, I can sacrifice him instead and gain him through life. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do, but he doesn't get the food token now. I get the life. His spell fizzles. Please don't make me use my Banishing Light on I don't want to draw a card yet because he might have another Crocs in here. But I do need one more land to do something. Ah, uh, you can put that down. I don't want to put Sentinel's Eyes on him yet. I don't have a lot of cards in the graveyard, so I want to see if he's going to try and destroy him first. Okay, there we go. I think we've got enough time still, even though our health is going to start to get low here. I can beef up the Hallow Blade and still save all my other spells. If I'm lucky, uh, he's looking at stuff. I can't really save that. There goes that plan. Do I want to... Yeah, let's go ahead and block. Because that way there's no penalty from Careless Celebrant. 
Uh, let's see. Let's get rid of you. This creates a different kind of threat, but one that may be manageable, possibly. You got something that destroys artifacts? You're looking at it. I'm going to have to use Banishing Light on the Eye Twitch, aren't I? An instant or a sorcery. Thank you. Now I can use Elspeth instead of Banishing Light. This is not an instant or a sorcery. This is an enchantment. And it goes after the only valid target. It's still getting a little too close for my comfort. Okay. Let's go ahead and banish the eye twitch, because I don't want him to get a decide board. He could exile something. If he puts down another land, he can drain me without attacking. If he attacks, I got him killed, but he doesn't know that. Okay, tap land is great for me. He thinks he's got a clear field though, right? Thinks he's got a clear field. So come on, attack me with the flyer. Thank you. I get use out of that. And at this point, I need help. Or I'm dead in a couple turns. So I can't exile his graveyard. I'll let, seriously. Land. Okay, what do we want? I guess Envoy. Plus one. Um, let's see, put down the land. Make it plus two, plus two. We do have removal. Okay, so we'll do it this way. I lose that spell, but he loses his murder. And I get a 4 4 flyer. With vigilance, so I can block the careless celebrant. Okay, that's all I got. If you got yet another murder or bacon the pie. This <laughs> are crap in a hat. Under might, it was going to die eventually anyway. Oh wait, I might have another Elspeth Conquers Death. I shouldn't get rid of my um, my creatures. I'm talking like I'm going to survive another round. That does it. And look what they used to beat me. Exile. Uh, I'm not sure if I should be happy about that or extra irritated. Either way, I think it does demonstrate the power of exile. All right, we'll show you the deck one more time. If I can find it in here. There we are. Uh, Sentinel's Eyes really was a power horse this time, so maybe an undervalued card that more of you should consider using in your white decks. Soul Guide Lantern really helped out against Croxa, so it proved to be a good choice in at least one of our battles. Angelic Ascension gave us additional life. It didn't actually help us in the end because he had so much removal. Uh, Flicker of Fate was like a superhero, so all sorts of uh, nice cards that are associated with the Exile mechanic and uh, makes for a pretty good combination overall. I uh, feel kind of bad about losing that last round, 
Uh, not sure if there was anything else we could have done. We got land when we wanted spells. And there's not much you can do about that. But, if you liked watching the gameplay, go ahead and click the like for us. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Have a good one.